Real Estate Agent Facebook group. I wanted to talk to you about a question that came up from one of the Fearless Agent members. His name is Abbas, and I might totally effed up your name right now, but that's okay because I don't, I'm don't. i not very good with names. But I tagged him inside of this post, and if you guys on Instagram aren't a part of that, go join the Fearless Agent Facebook group. You can just search it. And the question is, is as real estate agents, should we attend our closings? So if you guys are watching live or on the replay, put in the comments below if you should attend your, your, your closing appointments or if you shouldn't be uh, attending these. I thought this was a really good subject because it got a lot of chatter inside of the Facebook group on the comments and on the threads. And I wanted to share with you my belief system behind it. Now, if we look at the purpose of our business, at the very end of our business, we have seven different steps that we're driving towards. And that step at the very, very end is to create raving fans. We wanna make sure that our customers have an amazing experience. So here's my thoughts. Should you personally be at the closing table? I don't know that that's absolutely necessary, but I do believe that if you can find a way that makes their experience even more awesome, do that. Now, when I was a newer agent, I went to every one of my closings and I had my video camera and I was filming a testimonial. Today, there's no way on the planet that I can make every one of my closings, so I don't go to them. But I guarantee you that there is someone from my sales team that is at every single one of our appointments. And you know what, we take, I don't have a, I don't have our newer version here, but we take a Scentsy candle to every single closing with our brand on it. For some reason, these Scentsy candles, they end up inside of the, the homeowner's new bathroom. I don't know what that's all about, but that's where it goes. So anyone that goes to the bathroom sees the WGR brand with our Scentsy candle. But what's important is we went there to create an awesome experience for them. How many of you guys watching live or replay, drop a one in the comments, this is for you, Drop a one in the comments if you want to generate even more referrals. If you want to generate more referrals, create an even more awesome experience. If you want to create an even more awesome experience, add more value to what you give inside of your service. So my recommendation is if you have the time, if your production is less than 20 transactions, there's absolutely no reason why you should not be at the closing. Now, if you're producing 50, 75 deals, or you've got a team that's doing 100 plus deals, odds are you're personally not gonna be at that closing, but someone from your team should. And in fact, just like you have a script when you're calling a for sale by owner, or an expire, or your past client, your SOI, or whoever you're contacting, you should have a script or a, a way that you're gonna flow that closing appointment. Why? Because that closing appointment is one of the absolute best times to generate referrals. And for those of you that are watching, I know you wanna generate referrals, yes or yes. So if you wanna generate referrals, why not go into it with a purpose? Not just to be there on your phone, sending messages, adding up your commission, but really adding more value to your customer. Whether it's you, or your assistant, or one of your sales team members, go in and add value to that individual. What's that going to do to that person if they're at a peak state in their excitement of just selling their house for 500,000 and they got multiple offers above list price, or whatever it is, or maybe it's even that peak state of them celebrating their first house for those of you guys that work with buyers. Do you think that people are going to be excited in that moment? What if they then associated that moment of excitement with you and your sales team, your brand, you as an individual? Do you think that that's more apt for them to send your referrals or not send your referrals later on? We have to start looking at the long-term picture. How many of you want to make a lot of money today? Raise your hand. It's okay. Put a yes in the comments. How many of you want to make even more money going forward? You better all put a yes in the comments on that one. If you do, if that's what your ultimate goal is, is not just to make money today, but to make a lot of money over your career, we've got to begin creating an even better experience for our customers. Whether that means you personally attend the closing or not is up to you, but make absolutely certain that they enjoy the experience. Because the better they enjoy the experience, the more referrals they're gonna send you. Now, when you're five years into the business, and I know some of you aren't quite that far into it, but when you're five years into the business, do you want to still be chasing business, or do you want herds of business? business coming to you? Do you want to be known as the god or goddess of real estate or do you want to be known as the guy that has to prospect forever 37 hours a day? Sooner or later your prospecting turns into having conversations with your past clients. Imagine if you were so busy from 8 a.m. to noon you were talking with your own database, your own network, your own past clients. That's what we've got to be able to generate. Now, not everyone's gonna start there automatically. I didn't start there. I started with for sale by owners. I started with expired. You can check out my videos on my YouTube channel. I started with cold calling. And if you're not cold calling and you're not doing at least 20 deals a year, get on the freaking phone and call. But sooner or later, you're gonna
gonna generate so much business, you're gonna generate so many follow-ups, that's what you're gonna fill your time with, and that's where the money's made in real estate. And you can do that by going to the closing table or having a representative there, I promise you. Have a great day, guys. Appreciate you being a part of the Fearless Agent Facebook group. If you're not, go join it on Facebook. Make sure to go check out Fearless Agent Desk. Oh, we got a question over here. Brandon asks, what are the best four to five ways of lead gen to get more clients? Number one is your sphere of influence. The people that not know you, like you, and trust you, okay? Know you, like you, and trust you. Number two, the number two way to generate more clients is the past clients, and they probably already know you, like you, and trust you as well. That's why going to a closing or having someone on your team at closing, in my opinion, is so flippin' important. Number three is creating your people farm. Where does your people come from? That comes from the initial phone calls, the initial door knocks, the initial contacts of putting people into your network. A person that goes in the people farm real quick is someone that's thinking about buying or moving or selling or investing in the next two years. How many years? Two years. Imagine if you had 1,000 people that had said to you, you know what, Colton, I'm thinking about making a move in the next 12 to 24 months or maybe even six months. Would you be okay to have 1,000 people that you're staying in touch with over and over again? Yes or yes? I am totally a fan of that. Why? Because it's made me millions of dollars from following that strategy. Okay? The fourth way is to generate cold calls. Why cold calls? Because that's the quickest way to have a conversation with someone. Yes, you can spend money online. Yes, you can do open houses. Yes, you can do all this other stuff. You can buy Facebook leads, but that is going to get you a lower rate of return. You're going to have to have conversations with these people anyways. Do cold calls. One of two things is gonna happen with your cold calls. Number one is you're gonna set appointments. How do I know? We're signing a $750,000 commercial property this week from calling a wrong freaking number. How many of you guys are down to sign a 750K listing off a wrong number? Put a yes in the comments if that's you. The second thing is, even if you don't set an appointment with an individual now, but they're thinking about it in the future, well, you're going to have more people to follow up with your people farm. Okay, and then the fourth thing, or the fifth one, best way, in my opinion, is calling for sale by owners and expires because they're raising their hands thinking about selling or moving. Hopefully this helps you out. I gotta roll to my next thing I gotta do. Check out fearlessagent.com. Also, if you guys are watching on Instagram, check out my profile, I got a special link for you guys there. We will see you guys later. See you guys.